Thank you for joining us today. In this issue, we will discuss how to create and import users via the Exchange Control Panel. In order to get there, log into your Microsoft Online Portal and select Manage under Exchange. In the first section, Users and Groups, we have Mailboxes. You can create mailboxes individually, as well as room mailboxes, or import users via CSV. You can also see the details of existing users, reset passwords, delete mailboxes, as well as view deleted mailboxes in order to recover. The first section here, we will create a new user. set a password and make sure that it has a mailbox plan. You can also select to make sure that your users change their password on their initial login. Select save and it does indicate that you need to assign it a license or it will be disabled after the 30-day grace period. You now have your new user you can select details. You can modify any objects or attributes that you need to if you are not running directory synchronization. If you're running directory synchronization, you will need to modify it in your local AD. Mailbox usage can be modified via the set dash mailbox commandlet. You can set the prohibit send, prohibit send receive, and warning. The contact information, the organization information, and then you have email options to add and view email addresses associated with the user. Mailbox settings is the user role as well as the retention policy. These can either be set in the Exchange Control Panel or via PowerShell. You can create a mail tip. You can also modify mailbox features such as archiving and litigation hold. Archive will give the user a new 100 gigabyte mailbox if it is an E3 plan, if it, or more specifically if it's an exchange plan 2, as well as litigation hold which prevents permanent deletion of any item in their mailbox. The difference between archive for Exchange Plan 2 versus Plan 1 is that the in Plan 1 you get 25 gigs and you can use it for a combination of live mailbox and the archive mailbox, which can be accessed live, it's just not a mailbox that can be shared out. And with Exchange Plan 2, you get by default 100 gigs additional space for the archive as well as your 25 gig standard mailbox. The 100 gigs can be expanded out indefinitely as necessary. The litigation hold allows admins to recover and search email that the user has attempted to delete. And as far as the user is concerned, the items are gone. They're just in a special folder that the admin has access to. For phone and voice features, we have Exchange Active Sync enabled, and UM is an option if you will purchase the correct plan, which I believe is E3, and possibly a requirement of E4, depending on which features you need. So, for importing users via CSV, you have Import, you bring up the CSV file, 
and the minimum requirements for the CSV file is name, email address, first name, last name, and password. The name will double as the display name, so having both is not required, but you can use it if necessary. You then have to browse to the CSV file, hit next, and then it performs a consistency check to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the formatting of the CSV. It does not actually check users, does not check the information in it, just to make sure that it's in the proper format and it won't, won't fail verification check. So do realize that this the warning says on average it takes 15 minutes to import 100 users, the actual time may vary. You select import and once it is done you will have users listed here. Now in the meantime you can go to your mail and manage what you need to. You will actually get an email once this is done so that you don't have to just sit here with the mailbox open or the admin center open. Now that we've received our email, it indicates that there were zero errors. We created three new users, three rows of the CSV were processed, and the total runtime was roughly one minute. Also provides start time as well as the user that submitted it. It's great tracking information. If you want to see what it looks like when you have duplicate users, if you have errors, you can try to import again. The consistency check works fine. Select import again and you wait for the email to be sent. The error is sent in an email indicates that there were three errors. This email doesn't tell you what the issue is but you can get an error summary by clicking on the link in the email. It will then prompt to open or save a CSV file and the error will indicate Windows Live ID already exists as a managed Windows Live ID. Basically you have a duplicate email address so it needs to be checked and changed. So once you have your users all created you go back to your admin center, go to your user management, and you will get an indication that you have users that don't have licenses. You select the users that need the licenses, you select edit, you can skip the details section, you want to set them not as admins, you want to allow them to log in, and you want to set their current location. Select next and replace existing license assignment which is currently nothing with the current license plan that you need. Select submit and you get complete. Select finish and now your users can log in as necessary. Thank you for attending this session. Have a great day.